I talk about it because as we move into the next league, we are not going to be the team with the biggest budgets. We're going to be the team with one of the smallest budgets. And um, and ultimately, that's why I look forward to in the next 10 days going to India and finding out the aspirations of the owners, really, and um, what we want to achieve next year. Well, there you have it, folks. Blackburn Rovers complete their League One adventure. And guess what? They do it in style with a cheeky 2-1 win. Jack Payne on the score sheet. We'll talk about that and a lot more on today's show. Right, folks, back once again with another match review. This time it's the final, the final match of the season. Blackburn Rovers up against Oxford United. Talk about that match in just one second. But if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right, folks. Two one winners at the end of the day, thanks to goals from uh, Daryl Lennon. Bullet header into the back of the net. And then my old mate, my best mate in the whole wide world, Jack Payne, finally got himself on the score sheet. Probably his last appearance in the Blackburn Rovers shirt, to be honest with you. But sandwiched between those two goals, a goal by Oxford United. The guy, Henry, uh, it was an okay goal for them. But hey, hey we, we managed to wrap up with all three points. But that wasn't all the drama at Ewood Park. There were some dramatic scenes at the end of the match or towards the back end of the match. We had a pitch invasion. There was a couple of fights breaking out. And uh, yeah, and another pitch invasion after that, once the final whistle had gone. But uh, yeah, if you want to take a sneak peek at those uh, scenes, there is a video on my channel that might have that footage on there. For a while I'm allowed, anyway. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, to be honest with you, we're going to be talking more about the, those pitch invasion scenes towards the end of this, uh, end of this uh, episode. But come on, folks, we're Blackburn Rovers for crying out loud. We're... We don't, we, don't, we don't belong in this division. That sort of attitude is Tim Pot, baby. That's Tim Pot. That's the sort of stuff that you might get no disrespect uh, for, like, Gillingham or Southend or or maybe even Plymouth. You know, it's, it's we are we are above that. This this That actually just downgrades the quality of, of, of our football club to see that sort of scenes uh, at the end. Okay, I get it at Doncaster. I get it. We sealed the deal and got promoted. A little bit of a cheeky little, uh, little, little pitch invasion. I understand that. But what has changed between then and now? Okay, maybe you guys have brought the brought the football back to Ewood Park. And maybe it's a chance to kind of you know ah you know let, let off a little bit of steam. But uh, one, the match ain't over. Two, the scenes after that, and 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 th there was actually more scenes than just what what I what I kind of highlighted with the fights and all that. There was there was a lot of a lot of um, I don't know petty young. Uh, young punks out there who were just kind of disrespectful to the whole match and the whole football league in itself. You know, it was just it was just a snotty behaviour. And to be honest with you, that it should not be associated with Blackburn Rovers whatsoever. But hey, it happened, and we'll talk more about that in just one second. But anyway, the goals happened on the 12th minute. Daryl and bullet header. That's right, and Jack Payne on the 76th minute. Let's take a look at the statistics for the match. Blackburn Rovers dominating it with 58%, 42% for Oxford. 14 shots on goal. Well, no, 14 shots for Rovers. 14 shots for Oxford. Eight shots on target for Rovers. Only three for Oxford United. 11 corners. Four Blackburn Rovers and eight for Oxford. Also, let's cut away from the statistics for just one second. We also had a missed penalty or a penalty save. That's right. The skipper, Charlie Mulgrew. What was he thinking? I don't know. Maybe Eastwood kind of knows the ins and the outs of uh, Charlie Mulgrew and Ewood Park. I don't know. He just knows which way he's going to go. But anyway, he saved a Charlie Mulgrew penalty. And that was midway through the second half. That could have wrapped up the points early doors. Uh, but anyway, it was not meant to be for Rovers. But let's take a look at the starting 11. First and foremost, Blackburn, Rovers, Ryan Ringo, Indy, Lenahan, Bolgrew, Williams, Smallwood, Evans, Armstrong, Bennett, Samuel, and Graham. A couple of other interesting points of this formation. Now, Yimby was back at right back, so that was great to see him end the season. Possibly the last time we could have seen Adam Armstrong. He was okay today. We'll talk more about the ratings in just one second. Dominic Samuel, not too bad as well. Uh, who else was in there? David Ryo was back in the lineup. I thought he was done for the season, but he makes it. And uh, unfortunately, he was not able to get a clean sheet. Let's take a look at my match ratings. Ryo with a six, Naomi with a seven, Lenahan with an eight, Mulgrew with a six, Williams with a six. Uh, small with a 76 there. Not sure what that's all about. Six for Evans. Armstrong with a seven. Better with an eight. Samuel with a seven. And Graham with a six. Let's take a look at Oxford. Eastwood in goal. Kane, Dickey, Nelson, Ruffles, Napa. Brannigan, Moussinho, Rothwell, Henry and Obika up front. So all in all... Yeah, it was a it was an okay went uh, okay way to end the season the win that is but the the scenes after it's going to kind of mar 
uh, the way we end this season in League One. But hey, we are done. We're done and dusted with this League One. Some credit to some teams, though. Northampton, Plymouth, and of course Wigan. Those are the three sides, I think, that managed to uh, remain unbeaten against Blackburn Rovers. I think Northampton picked up two draws. Plymouth picked up a draw and a win. And Wigan got two draws. Uh, one at their place, one at our place. Now, I've had to say about the match. What has the gaffer had to say about the match, promotion, and all the kind of festivities around the whole thing? Here's what he said shortly after the match against Oxford United. I think so. It doesn't we have to talk about the support, really. It, it really opened my eyes on how big this football club can be, how, um, you know, the... The animal it is really that is, is under the skin of what we've been seeing all year with average crowds of somewhere between 11 and 13 and, and to, to see that today was a fantastic feeling to think that you're the manager of a club with that potential and that energy about it. So um, the players on the pitch did what they do all year really, you know, so we've, we only lost two, two games at home early in the season and since October we haven't lost a game and, and today they found a way to win again. So. Um, you know, fantastic achievement from everybody. Delighted for them all. For me, it's I'm going to enjoy it tonight, and then um, I think start preparing. Really, recruitment guys always in my ear. I've got a trip to India already booked, and um, let's see what we can do this summer. See if we can strengthen and help the, the existing squad. If you put it into context, the upper tiers haven't been open all year. At, uh, I haven't seen Ewood with an upper tier open. You know, either end of last season or this season, and. Um, it was it was quite remarkable to be honest. I think um, I wasn't expecting to see it as full as that, and um, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm delighted that we managed to put a performance on that won the game. I think we had lots of chances for staff. I think they, I give credit to them. They came and they got some good football as Oxford, and uh, we've got a manager who wants to play football. So credit to them. But as, as I said, we found a way to win the game, and um, yeah, it's it, it's what we've been doing this season. You know, after the first initial. Ten games or somewhere we lost four of them. It's uh, we've uh, we've found some consistency and we've ended up where we want it to be. Yeah, I think um, listen, I, I think the players are a fantastic bunch of players. I think that you can see there they, they as I do talk about family. They wanted their family around them. I think I think the supporters put on a fantastic show today. You know, I've just been looking at a sign in my office there that says One Rovers. I think. That's what we have to strive for, one rovers, the fans, the players, the families, the people who sell the tickets, the people who cook the food, the people who work in the shop, the people who steward around the stadium, one rovers and try and move forward and, and everybody make sure they understand the culture and the values of this club and um, certain things are unacceptable and they, people need telling when, it's, when that happens and um, that's how I've always tried to manage clubs. Sometimes you get time to do it, sometimes you can't. You don't get the time to create a, uh, create an environment, an atmosphere, a culture of a football club. But hopefully here we can uh, we can you know make that happen. Yeah, listen, I, I think I think put that into context. Really, that's why you know at this moment let's let's talk a little bit about Wigan and congratulate Paul Cook and his team, uh, you know his staff and his players. They're a fantastic football team, and and to finish above a team that gets 96 points is huge credit to them. And um, you know we had two fantastic games against them. To be honest, this year they both ended up even. Um, and ultimately they picked us to it, so, so congratulations to them and at the end of the day for me we, we, we achieved our goal this season is to get out of this division and to accrue 96 points, you know, in most seasons that is going to win any league as it goes along but um, there obviously there was three teams that sort of strode away from everybody else I think maybe the points that ourselves and Wigan um, managed to achieve this year was because of Shrewsbury Town pushing us every inch of the way really until maybe the last 10 days of the season. No, no, that's, that's <laughs> it. not at all. I think um, I think we, we, we should all be proud of the achievements of the players. And uh, listen, you put it into context, 96 points wins leagues generally and um, you know that's why I'm saying I think we can deserve huge congratulations as well. I think uh, ultimately Maybe the teams with the two biggest budgets are the two teams that won it. You know, it's not a nice time to talk about finance, and yet I talk about it because as we move into the next league, we are not going to be the team with the biggest budgets. We're going to be the team with one of the smallest budgets, and um, and ultimately that's why I look forward to in the next ten days going to India and finding out the aspirations of the owners really and um, what we want to achieve next year. If it's promotion, then we we need some help. If it's to consolidate. We still need some help, of course, but we have a we have a core base of players that will compete in the league. Yeah, listen, that's it's huge to be honest. 
Why? Because the following season, if you win the playoffs, the following season you've got less than four weeks off and you've got to start preparing and the players are generally fatigued, if that makes sense, but not, not at the start of the season, but come Christmas time they're running out of steam, particularly the way modern day football is going, high, high intensity, high pressing, um, playing on the front foot, you need energy and legs to be able to do that and um, the team need to break, you know, they'll have seven or eight weeks now and then we'll get back into it and um, hopefully we'll have had a few players by then and, and it'll be a, a new feel to the group, um, but we have to look forward to it, the challenge of it and... Um, some huge clubs in the Championship now. It's almost a Premier League too. Eh? You know, if Stoke City came down today, um, a team that have been up there six, seven, eight years, um, it's a huge challenge for everybody. If you think, I don't know, Aston Villa, Middlesbrough, Fulham, um, Derby County, someone's not going up. Only you know, if uh, if you think of um, Wolves are already up, and then if Cardiff win their game tomorrow, you've got a playoff of those teams I've just mentioned. Uh, only one of them is going to get promotion, and the other three are going to be left behind to try and do it again and so it's a huge league with huge teams huge stadiums huge fan bases um, but that's where we want to be at this moment and see whether we can build a club to to compete at the top end of that league now you've heard a little bit what the gaffers had seen but a little bit what i've had to say what have the fans been saying on social media well to be honest with you no one's really talking about the performance at the match they're more important they're more talking about the scenes the crazy scenes after it let's get into it biggest mickus said this get the selfish peep off the pitch and let the teams have their moment scally cleaners meanwhile two gays right foot they are being asked to return to the seat several times the team would like to come out for a lap of honor meanwhile stewart said this we have the thickest fans in the country no chance of the players coming out now ruined it for everybody Meanwhile, Turkish Delight fan. Idiot fans ruined out of the end. Players ran straight off. Guess people need their social media likes. As for Yellow Submarine, what a sad way to end the season. Sam Crow, selfish pricks. The club offer cheap tickets, stadium fills. Now the club will get fined. Absolutely perfect. He's not far wrong there. Blue Blood, even when we get it right, we've some Muppets doing it wrong. How hard would it to wait for the final whistle? Bet players are well up for celebrating now. Got to find that three or four stands generally stayed off the pitch, though. Meanwhile, Dan, what a load of bellends. I'd rather we don't fill he would if that brings all these scrotes. Oh, my gosh. What a knobhead. If you're in inbred, go support Burnley, he says. Meanwhile, Jaw, there's a trophy for second place? Question mark. Apparently, there is. Uh, first runner-up. Uh, or whatever. Tom said this. Absolute scumbag. My six-year-old is in floods of tears. The best game he's ever been to has been ruined, and he doesn't want to come back. Furious, so he possibly lost a rover there due to some idiots on the pitch. Scotch rover, find them all. When did we accumulate such set of thingy magics? Meanwhile, Simon Garner's 194. It's minus, but pitch evasions do happen. Manchester City last week, a final win, great crowd. We are out of this dead man's league, indeed. Gumby, Carl Robinson grabbed one of them by the throat, but was then pulled away by stewards and police. The fan fully deserved it, and they had been taken off the pitch. Sooner, it would have happened. Me, Marlo, on Twitter, at B-R-F-C-S-H-A-B-B-A, -B -B said, this is, this is disgraceful. I'd rather have 11,000 proper fans than the scum that went on the pitch. Meanwhile, Jen Bellamy, a.k.a. at Eric Blue Monster. Excuse my French, but you absolutely... Meanwhile, NYC Rovers said this, people who invaded the pitch, I'd rather have 10,000 attendees stay away. As for Emma Douglas, I hate is it in the Darwin end this season because of them knobheads. They, they have just ruined it for everyone. Absolute embarrassment. Meanwhile, some people on the old social medias were a little bit happy. Look at this, especially from the old Blackburn Rovers official Twitter uh, profile. Look at this, look at this snapshot right here of the team with the uh, runners up trophy and a couple of the big boys in there. Also, Rover the Dog is celebrating as well. There he is, quick snapshot. Meanwhile, Ryan Grant, what a lad this guy's been this season. To completely revitalised the Blackburn Rovers Twitter feed and the old social, uh, the old, uh, social media uh, presence of Rovers. And he sends this. This has been a great, unforgettable season at Rovers. It's been an absolute honour to be part of it. Quick picture of that. Is that Tony Mowbray? Yeah, that's Tony Mowbray. Meanwhile, Ant1188 says this. Great season, lads. Thank you. And a load of round of applause. Adrian2102. Excellent season. It's just been great. Now let's show the championship what we're made of. As for Emma Haslam, brilliant end to the brilliant season. Great to see the team spirit and camaraderie back at the club. We're going up. Uh, congratulations to Wigan on winning the title. As for Colin Fagan, uh, the end of the great journey. Thanks for everything, Tony and lads. Speaking for Rovers supporters everywhere. Uh, Lloyd Patrick Jebson, well done, Rovers. Fantastic season. It was great to be a part 
I've also bring my son down at Ewood for the first time. Won't be the last, but the best part is we are going up. Championship, here we come. As for Chris Worth, I'm not sure, but I think he's a Plymouth fan. Well done, boys. Great season to get back to the championship. Now that push back to the Premier League begins indeed let's hope so as for the rest of the matches around league one and the final table we'll talk more on that in just one second but wigan they beat doncaster one nil i think it was will grigg with the uh with the magical goal as for plymouth they will not be in the playoffs no they lost 5-2 to gillingham charlton on the other hand they actually lost one nil to rochdale so if if uh, Plymouth could have mustered a win, they might have they might have squeezed in, but no. As for the bottom four, Oldham are going down. Rochdale are staying up. Let's have a look at the results there. Oldham can only manage a 2-2 draw with already relegated Northampton. As for Rochdale, they did pick up a 1-0 win, like I just said, mentioned, uh, as they uh, kind of stopped Charlton in their tracks, but it was it was, it was it was too, it was already done for Charlton. They will be in the playoffs. So Shrewsbury, Rotherham, Scunthorpe, and Charlton will duke it out to try and get themselves into the championship and join Wigan and Blackburn Rovers. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks, and it's pretty much all I've got for you for the season. That's right, we are coming to an end. Oh my goodness, how weird is that? But hey, if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers, whether it's during the season or in pre-season, post-season, the summer, whenever. I'll be, I'll be still around, and I'll be still uh, making videos about Blackburn Rovers, but anyway, yeah. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, so make sure you check out those links in the description below. So, yes, for now, it's pretty much going to be, uh, yeah, goodbye. So, but, however, before I go anywhere, before I go anywhere, before I go anywhere, I've got, I've got something else to say. Yes, that's right, baby. The World Cup is coming on, and I'll be talking a lot about the World Cup in the off-season. So, hey, yeah, there's got plenty of stuff coming around the corner, so don't go anywhere uh, and stick around. Yeah, stick around, because it's going to be some real good stuff. Work, been ro really working my, my butt off uh, a little bit for a really good project in regards to the World Cup, and that will be coming out, obviously, closer to the start of the World Cup. Also, wait there, wait there. Don't go anywhere. Wait there. That's right, folks. I've got plenty more Blackburn Rovers content still coming up. Despite the season coming to end, there is a lot more stuff in the pipeline. I'm going to be doing an end-of-season review. That's right. We're going to be breaking down the whole season, the statistics, uh, going into the numbers a little bit. So it might, be a little, might not be to everybody's taste, but it's going to be there. Also going to be doing... Uh, I'm just going to adjust my, uh, my my top there. But I'm also going to be doing independent or individual uh, player reviews. I'll be talking about Harry Chapman. I'll be talking about Paul Caddis. I'll be talking about uh, Bradley Dack. And all each each one of them uh, players are going to get their own video. So uh, make sure you stick around for those. I've also got some, uh, my buy, keep, or sell video. That's going to be coming out soon. I've got actually, actually, I've not even recorded that yet. But I'm going to be doing that. Uh, also, what else am I going to be doing? Football manager, that's right. Got a really interesting football manager experiment. Because we've seen what Tony Mowbray's got. He's got 96 points for the season. But hey, I'm working on this really good football manager experiment. Well, I'll bring back managers from the past. That's right, we'll check out Owen Coyle. See if he could, if we simulate a football season with Owen Coyle in charge, see how many points he would get. Same with uh, Paul Lambert. Same with Graham Souness. Same with Kenny Daglish. And all the guys in between. We're going to re recreate the season with them in charge. See who comes out top of the pops. And I've already had a sneak peek at some of the numbers. There's a couple of surprises in there. And we've even got Steve Keen. Yeah, I know. Whew. But, uh, yeah, so plenty of stuff coming around the corner. So you've got, you got no fears. Blackburn Rovers content will continue, uh, as, will the Rover, uh, as will the World Cup content. But anyway, i got to get out of here. Let you guys get to it. Until next time, thumbs up. Subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.